Welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to start delving into some of the br different breeds of horses. And, you know, just looking at the definition of, of what a breed is, of either a horse or a donkey. Again, these were, you know, during, you know, the last few thousand years as, as man has evolved the horse through artificial selection, they've bred these animals or certain breeds for specific purposes. So, you know, we're going to talk about draft horses and draft animals. They were, they were bred to be able to plow fields and pull carts and wagons and stuff like that to our, you know, light horses and warm bloods that are more, you know, for riding. And then down to the ponies, which actually, you know, a lot of them had purposes, you know, working in mines, pulling carts, or, you know, for uh, smaller people or children to ride. So they all have, you know, kind of a trace back to a common ancestor. And, and with the breed, you know, to be able to establish a breed, which some people still are trying to do to this day, you know, these have to be characteristics that can be genetically passed on to their offspring, and they have to be unique to that breed. So that's why we, we've seen such a large number of, of horse breeds. Now, you know, who kind of dictates the, the breeds? And, and that's these breed associations or, or breed registries. And they're the ones that kind of, you know, they found the breed or founded the breed. They started the, the breed society or association. And then they, they actually keep records, breeding records, pedigrees, race records, stuff like that. And they kind of compile it all for that specific breed. And here's two examples, the AQHA or the Arabian Horse Association, just, just a couple of the many, many breed registries located throughout the world. Now, I did want to put one definition in here, and that is a grade. You know, what does it mean when you have a grade horse? And basically, that means that's a horse that's not registered. So if somebody calls it a grade animal, that means they haven't been registered with a specific breed registry. And typically, grade horses are not worth as much as one that's been registered with uh, its breed association. Now, in the world, there's over 175 horse breeds. I mean, that is a, a ton. So obviously, we're not going to be able to cover all of them in this lecture or this course. But you can go to this website, and this is the best website that I've found from Oklahoma State University here in the United States that actually lists uh, over 175 of the horse breeds, other livestock. You can find some of the donkey breeds that we'll talk about in another lecture on this website. So you can go there. It's on the course uh, link, and you can go there and explore all these different horse breeds. I mean, there's, there's, there's a ton of them. Now, before we jump into individual breeds, we first need to talk about you know, how they're divided up or classified. And that's, that's along these, these four classifications. So there's the light horse, which sometimes we call hot-blooded. There's the heavy horse, which we either call cold-blooded or a draft animal. Then there's the warm bloods, and then the ponies. Now, when you hear hot-blooded, that's not the actual temperature of their blood or their body. That was more in reference to their behavior or demeanor. So early on, hot-blooded horses might have been seen a little bit more fiery or with a little bit more attitude, and cold-blooded was just a little bit more docile. Now, that's not so true today. You know, many of our light horse breeds are, are pretty docile or as docile as some of the draft breeds. So, but that's just kind of where that probably originated from. Now, again, before we jump into breeds, one thing I felt that we had to explain is what's a hand? Oftentimes you hear people say, well, that horse is 16 hands or over 17 hands or 10 hands. And you always wonder, what, what's a hand? Well, it's a, it's a unit of measurement that one hand is actually four inches. And you measure from the ground up to the height of the withers. And so this is how we measure a horse's height. So for every hand, you just add four inches. So for an example, if we said a horse stood 15 hands, we would multiply that by four and we'd get 60. So then it's 60 inches tall or 152 centimeters to be exact uh, with that. Now, when you hear 0 0.1, 0 0.2, or 0.3, that is just the number of additional inches. So if a horse was 15.1, that means it's 60 plus one, so 61 inches tall. Or 0 0.2, if it was 15.2, that you would add two inches. That would mean it's 62 inches tall and so on. And you would never see a 15.4 because that 0.4 just means it's, it's another hand size. So then that horse would actually be 16 hands. And then 16.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, then 17 hands and so on. Now, starting with the light horse breeds, and this is just some averages. I mean, you're going to find light horses that actually weigh less than 900 pounds or 
or greater than 1,200 pounds. And you can see it in, in kilograms. You know, 14.2 is the minimum. Generally, or 14 hands is the minimum because anything under 14 hands we consider a pony. So 14 to 16 hands, but we're going to see here in a minute thoroughbreds stand well over 17 hands at times. And these horses were prim primarily developed for riding. Now, that doesn't mean there, there aren't light horse breeds that are multi-purpose. We see it in, here in the United States. We have a horse called the Morgan horse. It was made to pull carriages, to work on the farm, and to ride. So there are these multi-purpose light horse breeds, but, but primarily they were for riding. Now, before we, we, we kind of explore some of the light horse breeds, you have to go and start with the Arabian. This is one of the oldest breeds, most well-known breeds, and still really, you know, held in high regard in, in many parts of the world. Uh, this is just a wonderful animal, the Arabian horse. You can see some of the characteristics. Just a flashy breed. It's got that beautiful arched neck, you know, the dish face, the eyes, the ears. I mean, just everything about, about these animals are, are pretty wonderful, pretty fun to ride. Um, you know, I'm pretty fun to work with. And this is the foundational breed for many, many, many of our light horse breeds, as we'll see in the next one. Now, our next most popular or oldest may be the thoroughbred, you know, what we think of as the thoroughbred. And, you know, the thoroughbred actually came from Arabian stock. But once the thoroughbred breed was, you know, um, established, then it went and helped found other breeds like the quarter horse and Morgan horse and some, or saddle breads and some of these other breeds that we see uh, in the United States and throughout the world. So the thoroughbred is also known as kind of a foundational breed. Now the thoroughbred was bred really for endurance, you know, running long distances. So that's why we see, you know, in thoroughbred racing, they're running, you know, typically a, with a mile or a mile up to mile and a half. And, you know, they, they were kind of bred for this endurance. And you could see some of the Arabian influences in them, but again, not quite as flashy. You don't see the, uh, the broad chest. They're a little bit narrower in the chest and stuff like that. And then the next light, house, light, excuse me, light horse breed that we'll talk about is the American Quarter Horse. And this is actually the most uh, plentiful breed or largest breed in the United States with over 4 million quarter horses, and when we have, you know, 10 million total horses in the United States, almost half of them are quarter horses, so it's a very, very large uh, horse breed here in the United States. Wonderful animals. These animals were actually bred, you know, to be different from the thoroughbred, where they were actually, you know, used for sprinting, you know, really short races or, or fast moving animals. These animals are also known as to be really, really just gentle natured. Quarter horses are just wonderful animals to work with and be around. And then they're also kind of known as the, the cowboy's horse. So they know they have this cow sense. And if you've ever seen somebody sorting cattle, that's typically a quarter horse. And you can see the quarter horse, you know, jumping from side to side and they're kind of quick. And, and that, that's one of the, the many uses of, of this animal. And then we're not going to have time to jump into all these breeds, so I just listed a, a few other light horse breeds, but obviously there's, there's many, many others. And the two that I really wanted to highlight from this list is, is sometimes people get confused between a saddle bred and a standard bred. Okay, easy way to remember this is saddle bred, you think of saddle riding. This is a five-gated horse. This is a horse that was bred, you know, to have this nice, comfortable gates that you could ride. Standard bred, actually think standard racing, they actually, to be registered early on, and this isn't true today, but early on, they had to trot the mile in two minutes and 30 seconds. Now, through breeding, they're much faster than that today. So, you know, they don't do that, that performance racing anymore. Now, to register with the standard bred association, you just have to be from two standard bred parents. But it originally was a standard. You had to meet the standard to be registered to race. So that way you can remember it's saddle versus standard, and then you can see some of the others on there, um, but many, many, many others throughout the world. Now the next one is to go to the gentle giants, or what I like to think gentle giants, and if you've never worked with draft horses, they are wonderful, they're fun, they're kind of goofy a little bit, but they're just great, great animals, and they're, they're obviously very large, you know, somewhere, somewhere upwards of almost 1,800 pounds. They're very tall, generally, you know, 17, 18 hands. And these were the, the work horses. So these are the horses that were pulling plows, pulling carts. You know, that's what they were bred for, large, large muscular animals. And we're just going to touch upon a few of them. And you might as well start with the biggest one in the world, and that's the Shire horse, and it developed in England. 
and you know just a huge beautiful animal and they have this this hair growing on their lower limbs really long hair and we call that feathering so if you ever see that on a horse that's it's just known as feathering so you you can uh, use that looking at some of these others now the next one is you know pretty popular here in the United States and it's it's called the Belgian and it's from Belgium so you know spelled differently so make sure you you remember that and then they're really known for having this coat color which we're going to jump into coat colors more next week in next week's lecture so you know sorrel and flaxen those are terms that you'll get more uh, more of next week and we'll talk about that but again they have a lot of feathering around their lower leg and then the next one is the percheron and, and i chose this one to present because i've worked with percherons again before just like belgians and I haven't worked with Shires, but I've worked with Clydesdales too. And the Percherons just amaze me because they have this really thick, thick neck. I mean, they are just, you can see where they would have that harness on and they would pull and they're just these huge muscular, almost bodybuilders and what we would look at in humans uh, type horses and, and really beautiful animals. And then just some of the others you can see there, and obviously the Clydesdale is, is probably one of the most well-recognized draft horses, you know, with Anheuser-Busch here in the United States using them. Uh, you know, we see the commercials all the time and, you know, really, really quite popular. But then some others, and then you see the Frisian on there. You know, that, that sometimes it can be referred to as a light horse or a light draft, you know, the Frisian type animals, because that's typically one that people ride quite a bit. But they, they can pull carts, which sometimes you see. Now the next class is the warm bloods, and these were not brought about brought about by crossbreeding, you know, hot bloods and cold bloods, you know. So don't think that's how they came about. They're actually just a, a separate uh, class of animals, and these are really known as the sport horse lines, as you can see, and the, and they're typically the sizes of our light horses, you know, or our larger light horses. And I'm just going to touch upon a couple of them and. First one is the Hanoverian. It, it's one of the most popular sport horses in, in the world. You can see them in the Olympics, you know, and they're just really beautiful, uh, majestic animals. You can see them in competitions all the time and uh, really quite popular. And then the other one's the Trocaner. And it doesn't mean the, these animals can't do different events, but the Trocaner is typically known for dressage, which again, if you have never seen dressage, you know, please Google it, look at some of these animals. They're just it's amazing what some of these riders can do uh, with these animals when they're doing dressage. It's just, I'm always impressed when I see that. So typically a lot of those trocaners end up uh, in that type of events. And then just a, another list, not full list, but you can see really the European influence in a lot of those warm bloods. And that's where a lot of them originated in, in parts of, of Europe and becoming these, these sport horses that you see on TV all the time in competitions. And then the final one, the little guys, the, I like to call them ankle biters. You know, they're, they're always fun to work with, the ponies. And, you know, these animals, remember, they do have light horse type or light b pony bodies. And these are the ones that you typically see children riding. And then they have giraffe type ponies that were, you know, again, these were ones, like I said earlier in the lecture, that would pull carts and mines. You know, they, 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 were, they were built for purposes of, of getting in small spaces. Now, to be a pony, we generally consider that anything under 14 hands. So anything under 14 hands, we'll, call, we'll tend to call a pony. And the first one I bring up is the Shetland because it's, I know here in the United States and probably around the world, one of the mo more well-recognized, you know, from the Shetland Islands. And you can see, you know, they, they have two types, the light and the draft types. And generally, you know, pretty short, 46 inches tall um, compared to us. And then the other pony is the Welsh pony, and, and I bring this one up because this one typically tends to be a really good pony for, for young children or younger adults to ride. They've got a really good disposition. They've, they've been selected and bred for that. So if, if you're really looking for, for an animal to buy your, your child, this may be one that, that you could look at, and you could see that, that youngster there jumping the fence you know, on a Welsh pony. So then there's some other breeds, and the Pony of the Americas, you can see they're, they're more of a colorful, flashy type pony breed. And some of the others, the Icelandic Pony, that's where that other picture's from. It, it's uh, another part of the world that they have uh, lots of ponies running around. So, you know, there are many other breeds of ponies, and just wanted to touch base upon a couple of them. Now in the next lecture, we're going to kind of jump into some of the differences in, in donkeys and asses and different breeds 
that we find throughout the world.